I'm going to talk to you today about why so many guard dogs and protection dogs have failed and what you can do to prevent yours becoming the same statistic. First time here on this channel and you want to hear about American Bulldogs, protection dogs, working dogs and all related stuff, I want you to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss anything. Several different reasons why guard dogs and, and protection dogs have been failing. I'm going to give you three main reasons why I think protection dogs have failed. One, you chose the wrong helper, decoy or trainer to train your dog. Two, you picked the wrong dog or puppy. Three, you raise your puppy or dog in the wrong way. Now, I'm not saying that these trainers and decoys are poor at what they, they do. I just feel that they sometimes lack that necessary experience or skill set to do and train your dog in a way that is, is suitable for real life. They're great at training people's dogs for a competition or some kind of sport. However, because some of these trainers and decoys, they've never actually used a dog in real life, in real combat or protection work themselves. They don't know what's really required for you to have your dog trained up to a point which is going to be helpful and keep your family safe. The breeders are now breeding dogs to perform well in competitions and they're breeding dogs to be suitable for certain sports. So what they've, they've ended up doing, instead of breeding for certain genetic traits or natural protection dog or natural guard not interested in so much in protection work or the guard dog because those don't get you um, any accolades the only accolades you seem to be people that are breeding dogs and training dogs these days are getting is when they are on the sports field and the training field they get certificates and titles and that gives a name to the trainer or the breeder a real dog that necessarily protects a home or protects you on the street no one really knows about those things anymore so what is happening with some of these breeders, they're breeding dogs to have high prey drive and they, even if they're breeding for good nerve, some of these dogs just don't have the natural suspicion in them to protect a home. They're happy enough to see an intruder and think, think nothing of it. Some of these protection dogs, or you, what you believe to be a protection dog, will be on a training field biting a person in a suit, biting equipment and doing great protection work or what seems to be protection work in training for it to not know what to do in a real life situation. They wouldn't know a threat if they, if they even met one in their face. And these are why one of the reasons why protection dogs are failing. Sometimes when you see some of these training videos or you go to these training clubs and you see dogs working, some of them might even be working on a, a something they call a table and it's showing aggression towards a, a, a particular decoy or whatever else. But the decoy is just moving in an unnatural way that the average human works. So the dog is overly stimulated and seems to be showing aggression without the, the decoy using any equipment. So to, your, to the naked eye, this seems like the dog is actually being showing a, a natural aggression. So you, you have to be really careful with the type of decoys and trainers that you're, you're going to work with. So the other area I want to mention to you is that the way you raise your puppy or dog, which, which conflicts with that dog being a suitable guard dog or protection dog. Let me be clear, there is a, a clear distinction between an actual guard dog and a protection dog. Now I'm going to put another video in place in to talk about the differences between a guard dog and a protection dog and I will end up putting a link in there so you can go and watch that video. So there's many of you that your dog is, your, is part of the family and is a family dog. So you've got to be, but also you've got to be very clear if you want your dog to be a family guardian, a family protection dog, or, or just your family pet. So be clear what you want your finished dog to be like, because there's various different things that could come in conflict between how your dog is going to end up with the way you raise it. So if you want an out and out guard, guard dog, or that's going to guard, guard a location, a home, a property, or at the house, you may want to raise your dog in, in a specific way. If you want your dog to be a protection dog, which means to be able to go with you wherever you are, your family, and be suitable in, in any environment, you may want to raise your dog slightly different. I'm not gonna go into all the, the, the differences now and what you need to do, but we'll probably check back with me for other um, videos and I'll give you more details on that. Now, one of the key things you wanna be do with any puppy or dog that you want to be as a working dog is socialization. Now, when I mean socialization, I don't mean that you're meant to be bringing your dog around every single person and everybody and every dog, playing with your puppy or dog and interacting with your dog. That is one of the mistakes people sometimes make. But it's, it's important to, if you want a protection dog, for your dog to be stable and comfortable in most locations. So it would make sense that you bring your, 
your puppy or, or that dog as many places as possible. So it's in traffic, whether you live in a city or if you're in the countryside, you want it to be, uh, be able to be comfortable around um, farm animals and wild animals and not be chasing them off or running off on them. So those type of things that it does and behaves in a certain way, which is suitable for your specific needs. One of the mistakes people do when they've got a new puppy or, or, or a dog is that they, they allow all kind of Tom, Dick and Harry to rough play with your dog or you're introducing them to your dog and letting people and even children misplay with those puppies or dogs. It's essential that you, you definitely raise your dog with proper boundaries in place. They know the kind of routines they're going to be brought up in. They know roughly their walk time, their meal times. They know where they're going to be sleeping. Another crucial thing you have to make, ensure and be committed to if you want to have this protection dog or guard dog is to have the trainers come over to where the work that the dog is needed to be doing. If the dog needs to be protected in a certain location or, or a home, you need your trainers or decoys to be coming to that property and doing scenarios at, your, at that particular place. Otherwise, what do you want? The dog just to be going to a training ground and doing work at a training ground, but not at the particular home or location where the dog actually needs to be worked. The other thing, if it's a protection dog, and you want that dog to be suitable and switched on at the right times when you're when you're out in public, whether you're going for a jog or taking your children to the park and your dog needs to be prepared to work in any location, the dog needs to be trained and conditioned to be ready to work in public. So that is a significant thing that you must do. People doing when they're raising puppies or, or dogs is that they feel because they want their dog to be quite aggressive to everybody, they, sh they keep their dog or puppy away from all people and hoping that that dog is going to go up to be aggressive towards people. So, sometimes that ends up giving your teaching a puppy to sometimes act shy or overly aloof to, to people. So they, they can become, end up becoming a little bit shy or nervous and, and they can end up responding in a, in a fair aggressive instead of a confident, assertive dog. Now moving on to why you people have chosen the wrong puppy or dog. This is an often occurrence where people get one dog and they feel that that dog's never lived up to what you're supposed to do. Then they end up trying to buy a second or a third dog to fulfill the failings of the, of the first two dogs. Now let me go into it. Many of you think it's about choosing the right breed. Yes, there are going to be certain breeds that are going to be more suitable for protection dogs and guard dogs. We know that. Several dogs you may think of that I do are German Shepherds, Rottweilers, American Bulldogs, Manoirs, Dobermans. However, within those breeds, you have to be clear on the types of dogs you're going to get. Because within those breeds, you're going to get certain bloodlines that are more geared to be just pets, sport dogs, and some that are just show dogs. So it's important to get the, the breedings and puppies and dogs from the right kennels. You also have to be mindful that if you go and see these videos out there of dogs tr training or going to training clubs and you see dogs working and they're, they're awfully running 100 miles an hour and doing super athletic stuff, jumping through fire hoops and working on a decoy, rolling around with them and it looks very spectacular. Sometimes these dogs won't necessarily be suitable protection dogs. They're highly prey orientated, but they may not necessarily be, have the right qualities that you're actually looking for. So you've got to be very clear on what you want in a dog. Because in reality, I doubt most of you, most civilians will be letting a dog off the lead to chase anyone, which would be a highly um, legal issue. So most of your protection dogs will be working close quarters with you on the lead if you if you was with them. Or if they were loose and apart, they'd definitely not be allowed to be chasing anyone and biting nobody. And that goes for um, a guardian, a dog that's working in a house. It's not going to be chasing or running over fences, chasing somebody to bite them. They're going to be working in a close proximity within their territory to do a particular job. When you find the types of breeds that you're, you're interested in to work in, in either security, protection, or as a guardian, you want to get in touch with the breeders who are breeding these types of dogs and try to speak to its other people in the working dog field to give you, to point you in the right direction. Going straight to any breeder, they will basically tell you, yeah, their dog can 
uh, are excellent guard dogs or excellent protection dogs, but they may not necessarily have the actual credentials to back it up. So, but once you find the right breeders, you want to speak to the, the breeders and find out, let them know exactly what you're looking for. And perhaps when they they have a little pups, they may be able to guide you to what breedings or what um, puppies within that litter that might suit your needs more as a protection dog or guard dog. One of the techniques modern day trainers are using often these days to train your dog, they are getting you to use food or toys to get your dog to motivate your dog, which is a great technique. Unfortunately, sometimes these are, can work contrary to what you want in a, in a real life situation because it can cause your dog, your protection dog, to be willing to take food from any stranger or play with any individual that they're not supposed to be playing with. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with sport dogs and they're, they're some of the, my favourite dogs and some quality dogs out there. The only difference is that sports was once a way of, of breeders to test their dogs in and find out what qualities that dog had, what they're lacking and find ways of um, improving that and finding good selection breedings to improve the next generation. Unfortunately, these days sports seem to be more about competition and, and, a, and a token and basically a points game where now it's all about trying to be clever in, in the way we raise and train dogs so it's difficult to really find the quality and suitable animals that we were, were once breeding. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. One of the techniques modern day trainers are using often these days to train your dog, they are getting you to use food or toys to get your dog to motivate your dog, which is a great technique. Unfortunately, sometimes these are, can work contrary to what you want in a, in a real life situation because it can cause your dog, your protection dog, to be willing to take food from any stranger or play with any individual that they're not supposed to be playing with. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe.